Hi, everybody. It looks like it might be a little while before we, uh, we can all get back together again in one place. So we're going to try to post some uh, devotionals and some sermons on the church YouTube site. Um, first thing that I would like to say just is that I really uh, I miss you guys. I miss being able to all come together in the same place. And I miss your voices and your faces and, and the coffee scrum after the service. Looking forward to, uh, again, sometime being able to sit at the piano and uh, see the door open and people coming in. But right now, uh, we're in a season of cancellations and closures and postponements and not really having any idea what's going to happen in the next few weeks. And I mean, if I'm honest, I have to say that it, uh, it's getting to me a bit. It's making me feel impatient. It's making me feel tired. And you may be feeling the same way. Um, a few years ago, um, a few years ago, there was a, a summer when our youngest son was dealing with depression. And it was the first time that we had encountered that. And, and you know, as parents, we were just kind of hoping that it would clear up and, and go away. So uh, as parents, we tried to encourage him to, uh, to keep going, to, you know, get out there and do stuff. And one of the things that we tried to get him to do was uh, uh, find a summer job. And there weren't a lot of jobs that year. He had a hard time finding anything, and in the end, the only thing that was available was strawberry picking. This is going somewhere, I promise. He got a job picking strawberries for a local farm, and uh, you know, we thought mm, this is going to be a good job for him in his current state of mind. It's out in the sun, it's out in the fresh air, uh, there's not a lot of time pressure. Um, he can make some money and feel good about that. It'll lift his spirits. Plus, I mean, strawberry picking has got to be the ultimate introvert-friendly job, right? And he, uh, yeah, he tried. He, he really tried to, uh, to do a good job, and, and he saw out most of the season. But he, he just absolutely hated it. He hated picking strawberries. And we couldn't figure out why there was something about it he just hated it and near the end of the season he'd had enough and he quit and it wasn't until some time later that we started to think that maybe the problem was the posture of picking strawberries if you're feeling depressed maybe it's not the best idea to get a job where you spend four or five hours with your head down looking down at the ground and your shoulders slumping forward we really thought that maybe that posture made his depression a little bit worse. That's not a medical diagnosis. It was just an observation at the time. But I've been thinking lately about um, the idea of looking down and looking up. In the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah delivers a message to God's people and uh, the Israelites had been in a really dark place for quite a long time. They had been invaded by a foreign army, they had been defeated, and they had been basically scooped up and taken off in captivity to somewhere far, far away from home. Now, their situation was a bit different from ours. Um, they had been told by God in no uncertain terms that <clears throat> the situation they were in was a direct result of their own behavior, their own failure. It was time out for bad behavior, basically. We don't have any direct reason for, for believing that that is true of the situation that we're in right now. We don't, God has not said that to us directly. Uh, another difference between their situation and ours is that what they were afraid of was men with swords big, scary, violent men who, if they didn't keep them happy, would basically just kill them and toss them in a heap somewhere. What we are afraid of, what so many people are afraid of and anxious about right now, is, is each other, is friends and neighbors and family. And that is so different from their situation. 
Another thing that's different about their situation from ours is that they were taken en masse from their home and taken somewhere else where they did not want to be. We have been divided from each other, separated from each other, um, put in our own little corners to try to protect ourselves from each other. But with those differences aside, we are still wondering why on earth is this happening? We are still afraid and anxious and worried. And we are still not where we want to be. So what do those words written so long ago have to do with us today? Um, there are a lot of things in scripture that we take as promises, but they were written a very, very long time ago in a day that is not now to people who are not us. But those words are enduring. They, they contain truth. They contain life. They contain things about God that he wants us to know. He wants to tell us things about himself. That's why these words have been preserved and why we still have them today. So in Isaiah 40, we find one of those passages. It's a passage that we, from which we take a, a tremendous amount of encouragement, uh, a tremendous amount of hope. There are sections of Isaiah 40 that we have memorized and uh, written on plaques and t-shirts and plastered all over our homes. So uh, I just want to finish this by reading to you uh, a section of Isaiah 40 that I've rewritten in my own words that I'm finding encouraging right now. Isaiah 40. Look up, he says. Look up and see how the eagle flies. Look up and count the stars. There have been days when I have run and run and run, thinking I'd never run out of breath. Days when I walked mile after mile after mile, strength after strength after strength. Days when I looked up and I soared. But now there are days when I can only look down, down at the road, as far as the next step. Days when my weariness catches up to me and I stumble and I fall. So I cry aloud, God doesn't see me. The Lord isn't listening to me. And I listen and I listen and I listen to my own echo. He doesn't, he isn't, he doesn't, he isn't, he doesn't, he isn't. But in time when my echo fades, I can hear him. Look up, he says. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? I am the everlasting God, the creator of the whole heaven and earth. I never get weary. I never stumble. I never fall. I have strength to give to the weary and the powerless. You may stumble. You may fall. But trust in me. Wait on me and I will be your strength to walk again, to run again, and to soar. He says, look up. So I will look up. I will look up and see. I will look up and walk. I will look up and run. I will look up and soar. Heavenly Father, Turn our eyes upward. Keep our shoulders square and our heads held high. Don't ever let us forget to rely on you for your strength and your skin.